in the hallowed halls of the esteemed Cadillac Academy, a prestigious institution renowned for its academic rigor and pursuit of knowledge. A bright-eyed freshman named Alice embarked on her journey of intellectual enlightenment, eager to impress her professors and immerse herself in the world of academia. She spent countless hours within the library's labyrinthine depths, surrounded by towering bookshelves and the whispered secrets of ancient tomes. One evening, while engrossed in a particularly captivating literary analysis, Alice noticed a peculiar pattern in the library's layout. A series of seemingly random symbols etched into the wooden floorboards caught her attention, their cryptic arrangement hinting at a hidden code. Her curiosity piqued. Alice embarked on a quest to decipher the symbols, her determination fueled by an insatiable thirst for knowledge and a desire to unravel the library's hidden mysteries. Her relentless pursuit led her to a secluded corner of the library, where a concealed door, disguised as an ordinary bookshelf, stood as a gateway to a secret society known as the Bibliophiles. This clandestine group, composed of the most erudite and enigmatic students, sought knowledge beyond the confines of conventional academia, delving into ancient texts and forbidden lore that whispered of arcane rituals and forgotten powers. Alice, intrigued by the allure of forbidden knowledge and eager to prove her intellectual prowess, sought entry into the bibliophile's inner circle. She presented her deciphered code to the society's enigmatic leader, a charismatic figure known as the Keeper of Tomes. Impressed by Alice's intellectual acumen, the Keeper granted her access to their clandestine gatherings, where she would witness the depths of their obsession with the occult. The bibliophiles convened in a hidden chamber beneath the library, a sanctuary illuminated by flickering candles and adorned with cryptic symbols. There, they delved into ancient grimoires, their voices chanting incantations that echoed through the chamber's hallowed space. Alice, drawn into their mesmerizing rituals, felt a surge of power as she joined their incantations, her voice blending with theirs in a symphony of arcane energy. As Alice's involvement with the bibliophiles deepened, she discovered the true nature of their dark practices. They sought to harness the power of ancient entities, entities that whispered promises of knowledge and power beyond human comprehension. The rituals became more intense, the incantations more powerful, and Alice found herself drawn further into the bibliophile's web of forbidden knowledge. One fateful night, during a particularly potent ritual, Alice witnessed the bibliophile's ultimate goal— to summon an ancient entity known as the Bookworm, a creature of immense power and insatiable hunger for knowledge. The Bookworm, once summoned, would grant them access to a vast repository of forbidden lore, but at a terrible cost. Horrified by the bibliophile's reckless ambition, Alice realized the depths of their corruption, their pursuit of knowledge, twisted into a dangerous obsession that threatened to unleash a malevolent force upon the world. She knew she had to stop them, to sever their connection with the bookworm before it was too late. Armed with her newfound understanding of the bibliophile's rituals, Alice devised a plan to disrupt their summoning ceremony. She would infiltrate their gathering, subtly alter their incantations, and disrupt the flow of arcane energy effectively severing the link between the bibliophiles and the bookworm. The night of the summoning arrived, and Alice, her heart pounding with a mixture of fear and determination, infiltrated the bibliophile's hidden chamber. As the bibliophiles chanted their incantations, Alice carefully wove her own counter-magic into their words, subtly altering the ritual's trajectory. The air crackled with arcane energy the tension palpable as the bookworm's presence loomed closer. Just as the bibliophiles reached the climax of their summoning, Alice unleashed her counterspell, a surge of energy that disrupted their incantation and severed their connection to the bookworm. 
The chamber erupted in chaos as the bibliophiles realized their plans had been foiled. The bookworm, sensing their weakened connection, retreated back into the depths of the arcane realm, its presence fading like a dissipating shadow. Next story. In the tranquil sanctuary of the grand old library, where the musty scent of aged paper mingled with the whispers of countless stories, a shy bookworm named Eleanor sought solace among the towering bookshelves. Social interactions often left her feeling awkward and out of place, but within the library's embrace she found a world of comfort and companionship in the company of literary companions. Eleanor spent countless hours exploring the library's labyrinthine depths, her fingers tracing the spines of ancient tomes, her mind devouring the words that transported her to far-off lands and fantastical realms. Among the library's quiet corners, she discovered a secluded alcove, tucked away from the bustling main hall, where she could immerse herself in her beloved books without interruption. One evening... As Eleanor settled into her favorite spot, a strange sensation crept over her, a subtle shift in the atmosphere. The air grew still, and a hush fell over the library, as if the very books themselves were holding their breath. A shiver ran down Eleanor's spine, and she had the distinct feeling that she was not alone. Glancing around the alcove, she noticed a faint shimmer in the air a spectral presence that seemed to emanate from the depths of the bookshelves. The presence grew stronger, coalescing into a hazy figure, its form indistinct but undeniably there. Fear gave way to curiosity as Eleanor realized that this spectral presence shared her love of books. It seemed to draw energy from the written word, its form flickering and brightening as Eleanor delved deeper into her reading. The presence appeared to be benevolent, even protective, as if it were a guardian of the library's literary treasures. Eleanor, emboldened by her newfound companion, began to engage with the spectral presence, sharing her thoughts on the books she read and the characters she encountered. The presence responded with subtle gestures, a gentle rustling of pages or a soft glow that seemed to convey understanding and appreciation. However, as Eleanor's bond with the spectral presence deepened, she began to notice a disturbing change. The presence grew possessive, its protectiveness morphing into an obsessive desire to keep Eleanor within the library's confines. It would disrupt her attempts to leave, causing books to fall from shelves or doors to slam shut, as if trying to trap her within its spectral embrace. Eleanor, initially intrigued by her ghostly companion, now felt a growing sense of unease. The spectral presence, once a source of comfort, had become a menacing force, determined to keep her captive within the library's walls. Determined to break free from the spectral presence's control, Eleanor devised a plan. She would use her knowledge of the library's layout and her understanding of the presence's obsession with books to lure it into a trap. One evening, as the library prepared to close, Eleanor selected a rare and valuable book from the collection, knowing that the spectral presence would be drawn to its literary significance. She carefully placed the book in a remote corner of the library, far from her usual alcove, and waited for the presence to manifest. As expected, the spectral presence, sensing the presence of the rare book, abandoned its vigil over Eleanor and drifted towards the book's location. Eleanor, seizing her chance, slipped out of the library, her footsteps echoing through the empty halls as she made her escape. The spectral presence, realizing it had been tricked, let out an ethereal wail that reverberated through the library. Books tumbled from shelves, and a gust of wind swept through the halls, but Eleanor was already gone, leaving the spectral presence trapped within the library's walls. Its obsession with books and its desire for companionship twisted into a spectral prison. Next story. Thomas immersed himself in the pursuit of knowledge. Night after night, 
While his fellow students reveled in the carefree joys of campus life, Thomas remained steadfast in his academic endeavors, his dedication earning him the distinction of being the library's last patron. One evening, as the library's closing hour approached, Thomas found himself engrossed in a particularly captivating historical text. The surrounding world faded away as he delved into the chronicles of ancient civilizations. His mind transported to far-off lands and forgotten eras. The library's closing announcement echoed through the vast halls, pulling Thomas out of his historical reverie. He glanced at his watch, surprised to find that hours had passed unnoticed. With a sigh of resignation, he gathered his belongings and made his way towards the exit, the library's silence now a heavy cloak around him. As he passed through the towering bookshelves, a sudden chill swept through the air, causing a shiver to run down his spine. An eerie silence descended, the usual creaks and groans of the old building replaced by an unsettling stillness. Thomas paused, his senses on high alert, a primal instinct warning him that he was not alone. Out of the corner of his eye, he caught a glimpse of movement, a fleeting shadow darting between the bookshelves. His heart pounded in his chest as he strained to see through the dimly lit aisles, his imagination conjuring up images of lurking figures and unseen eyes watching his every move. The oppressive silence was shattered by a sudden crash, the sound of books tumbling from a shelf in a distant corner of the library. Thomas froze, his breath caught in his throat, his mind racing with fear. The shadowy figure had become more than a fleeting apparition. It was a tangible presence, stalking him through the labyrinthine stacks. Thomas, his academic curiosity replaced by a surge of adrenaline, decided to make a run for the exit. He sprinted through the aisles, his footsteps echoing through the cavernous library, his pursuer's presence a palpable force behind him. As he rounded a corner, he stumbled over a pile of books deliberately placed in his path, sending him sprawling onto the hard floor. The air grew heavy, a suffocating presence pressing down upon him. He scrambled to his feet, his heart pounding like a drum in his chest, and continued his desperate flight towards the exit. The shadowy figure seemed to anticipate his every move, appearing and disappearing among the bookshelves, toying with him like a cat, toying with a mouse. Thomas felt a growing sense of despair, trapped in a terrifying game of hide-and-seek with an unseen predator. Just as he reached the exit, a figure materialized before him, blocking his path. The figure was tall and gaunt, its features obscured by the shadows, its eyes glowing with an eerie luminescence. Thomas recoiled in terror, his mind unable to comprehend the nightmarish apparition before him. With a burst of adrenaline, Thomas lunged forward, pushing past the shadowy figure and throwing open the library's heavy doors. He stumbled out into the cool night air, his lungs gasping for breath, his body trembling with fear and exhaustion. Turning back towards the library, he saw no sign of the shadowy figure, only the looming silhouette of the building against the darkening sky. The library, once a sanctuary of knowledge and intellectual exploration, now held a sinister aura a place where his deepest fears had manifested into a terrifying reality. Thomas, his academic zeal tempered by a newfound sense of caution, never again lingered in the library after hours. The memory of the shadowy figure haunted his dreams, a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurked within the seemingly innocuous walls of knowledge. As a huge support please hit like, subscribe, and maybe share your thought or any experience before going to watch another video. Thank you so much. Have a good day.